All right, in this video, we're going to sketch this function here. This is the first video in a series of seven or eight videos where we're, where we're going to work a curve sketching problem in each video. And as, as the videos progress, it, the, the curves will get a little bit more complicated. So this is the simplest. We'll start with the simplest. Okay, step one. And to do, to do this, we're going to go through the steps that, that were outlined in the textbook that you would see, that the steps that you would, you'll learn in a typical calculus course for curve sketching. So step one is you write the domain of the function. So this is a polynomial, which has domain from negative infinity to infinity. And we can also put the range as well. The textbook didn't specify to do that, but might as well go ahead and do that. So the, the domain of a polynomial is also negative infinity to infinity, or the range. All right, next, let's get the intercepts. So first, what is what are the y-intercepts? So the y-intercepts, you set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So y of 0 is equal to 0. All right, now let's get the x-intercepts. You set y equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, so let's solve this, factor out an x squared. So x is equal to 0 and x is equal to negative 3. All right, now let's plot these. And what we'll do is each tick will be 1 half. So 0, 0 at the origin is an x and y intercept. So 0, 0 at the origin is an x and y intercept, and then minus 3. So 1, 2, 3. Minus 3, 0. Okay. Okay, next, let's test for symmetry. And so there's three forms of symmetry to test for with a function. A function can be even or odd. Even means it's symmetric with respect to the it could be even, odd, or periodic. So even means the function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And you test for that by substituting, by, you see, is y of minus x, is that equal to, the, to y of x? So y of minus x is equal to, okay, No, that's not equal to y of x. That is not equal to y of x. Okay, now to test for an odd function, which means it's symmetric with respect to the origin, what you're testing for is, is y of minus x equal to minus y of x. So minus y of x is equal to minus x cubed, minus 3x squared, and this is not equal to y of minus x, right? This is y of minus x. That's not the same thing. So it's not, it's not an even function. It's not an odd function. Now, periodic, the idea is, is there, if you say y of x plus any number, positive or negative number, is that equal to y of x? Is there any number p such that this is true? And this is like the idea is you're shifting the curve along the x-axis, and do you get the original curve back, like a sine and cosine, or even like a tangent? I think all trig functions are, are periodic. Yeah, so you, you it, like a sine, if you, sine of x plus 2 pi is equal to sine of x. Well, that's not going to be the case here, not with a, not with a, a polynomial like this. There's no periodic symmetry. All right, so no symmetry. Okay, next is the, the book says asymptotes are next, but I would say what's next is end behavior. Analyze the end behavior. And so what that means is go to the domain and take the limit as x approaches each endpoint. So the endpoints here are, are infinity, which is, brings in the potential for like a horizontal asymptote. But even if this wasn't like infinite, 
like this was ne negative three on the left, let's say, then you would take the limit as X approaches negative three from the right. But okay, we've got the, the endpoints are infinity. So let's take the limit as X approaches negative infinity of X cubed plus three X squared. So what we get here is negative X cubed is negative infinity or negative infinity cubed is negative infinity plus three times negative infinity squared. So that's going to be positive infinity. So this is infinity minus infinity. This is an indeterminate form. We can't say what this is. It, you know, you don't, this is not equal to zero. Because you okay, do you have what kind of inf infinity is not a specific number? Do you have a hundred quintillion minus five quintillion? Well, that's not zero. And so, we're going to talk about all of the different indeterminate forms in the next section, the Lobstool's rule section. But actually, we learned this indeterminate form in chapter two. But so to solve this, what you do is you just rearrange the function into a different form and then try again to see if you can get a non-indeterminate form. So let's factor out an x squared. All right, now let's try. This is negative infinity squared is infinity and then times negative infinity plus three is negative infinity, right? Negative enormous number plus three is negative enormous number. This is not indeterminate. Infinity times infinity is not indeterminate. Enormous positive number times enormous negative number is an enormous negative number. So this limit is negative infinity. All right. What is the limit as X approaches positive infinity? Of the function. So you have infinity cubed plus three times infinity squared. So this is positive infinity. You get infinity plus infinity. Infinity cubed is infinity. Infinity squared is infinity times three is infinity. Infinity plus infinity is not indeterminate. That's infinity. All right, so that's the end behavior. We, we don't, I'm, I'm not going to draw it yet, but the idea is we know it's going to be doing, the function's going to be doing something like this at the ends. As X goes to infinity, it's, it's ballooning to infinity. As X goes to negative infinity, it's ballooning to negative infinity. Okay, now next is the, the, the textbook mentions vertical asymptotes, but the way I would say to do it is instead of doing vertical asymptotes right now, like so you did the endpoints, and you know you could have gotten a horizontal asymptote here if this was equal to a, like a finite number, but so you, you, know, you might have you might do at this step, you might come across vertical or horizontal asymptotes or slant asymptotes. But before doing, again, the textbook mentions to do vertical asymptotes next, but I guess to me the idea is you technically don't know where the vertical asymptotes are. I can, what, I'm, what I mean by that is how do you know what X values to take the limit? The idea is you're going to take the limit as X approaches a certain X values from the left or the right, and if, they, if that limit goes to infinity, it's a vertical asymptote. Well, how do you know which X values to use? And so I would say come to the the intervals of concavity and increasing, decreasing. Well, at least, okay, yeah, find, okay, don't, don't go there yet, but find the, find the critical points. That's what I would do next. Find the critical points. And, and so the, the official critical points are, are the, are the points where the first derivative equals zero doesn't exist. That's a critical point. But I also talked about something you could call like a second critical point. That's not a math term, a technical math term, but there's the critical points with respect to the second derivative, where the second derivative doesn't exist or is equal to zero. You're going to use those to analyze the intervals of concavity and look for inflection points, just like you're going to use the, the actual critical points with the first derivative to look for, to, to find the intervals of increasing, decreasing, and the local maxes and mins. But what you can do is, first, once you get all of these critical points, the first and second critical points, you could take the limit as X approaches those points from the left and the right. And if any of those limits go to infinity, it's a vertical asymptote. All right, so let's let's get the critical points with respect to the first derivative. So y prime is 
is equal to 3x squared. Okay, so there's nowhere where this doesn't exist. But so, so but where does this equal to zero? So let's factor out a 3x. So you get x plus 2. All right, so when x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to negative 2. All right, now what about y double prime? So this would be 6x plus 6. Factor out a 6. Where is this equal 0 when x is is equal to negative 1. Okay, this, there's nowhere where it doesn't exist. All right. So what we could do now, though, is... So these aren't like intercepts. It's, it's not like y is equal to 0 here. Let's, let's put... Well, okay, this is 0, 0, but let's get these actual points, their locations. So what is y of minus 2? <laughs> minus 2 cubed is 8 plus 3 times minus 2 squared, so, oh no, minus 2 cubed is minus 8, plus 3 times minus 2 squared, so it's minus 8 plus 12, so 4. So this is minus 2, 4. All right. Now this is minus 1, and then y of minus 1 is minus 1 cubed is minus 1, plus 3 times minus 1 squared, so minus 1 plus 3, this is at 2. Okay, so let's plot these. I don't know what happened to the the intercepts. Okay, so 0, 0, and then minus 3. So 1, 2, 3, minus 3, 0. And then, okay, minus 1, and then 2, 1, 2. And then minus 2. 1, 2, and then 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So there's the, the critical points. All right. And then, so again, what you would do is you, you could take the limit as x approaches each one of these from the left and the right and just to see how it behaves we're not going to do that because, you know, they, they don't do that in typical curve sketching videos that you'll see in, in a calculus course. They don't do that because they just know they look at the function and they say, OK, is this a dividing by zero scenario or, or one of the trig functions other than sine and cosine? That's the only situation where you have a vertical asymptote, those two situations, at least in, for the main functions that, that, we, that we're familiar with in algebra and trigonometry. So we know there's no vertical asymptote here. So we're not going to do that. But in a typical situation, you, you, could, you, would, you could analyze the limit as x approaches the, the critical points from the left and the right of the function, of the derivative, of the second derivative. You could do anything like that. All right? So, there's, again, there's no vertical asymptotes. There's no horizontal asymptotes. There's no vertical asymptotes. So next would be the analyze the, in, the intervals that are increasing and decreasing in the intervals of concavity. So we've got the first and second critical points. Now to analyze the intervals of concavity, or the interval, the increasing, decreasing intervals, we do... So the idea is, like we've talked about in the previous example problem videos and in the previous sections, the, the first derivative can only change signs at a, <laughs> at a critical point. So at zero and at minus 2. So only in these regions here. Or only across these, po only across these points. So in other words, like, there's going to be, we, we can find what's the is, the, is the first derivative positive or negative here, and it's going to be that, it's going to stay that way for this entire interval. And then it, it can only potentially switch here, and then switch here. So what is y of, or no, y prime of, and let's put minus 3. What is y prime of minus 3? That's 
So 9 times 3 is 27, and then 6 times minus 3 is 18, so 9. So this is increasing. All right, now what is y prime of minus 1? So minus 1 squared is 1, so 3, and then minus 6. So decreasing in this interval. Now what is y prime of 1? So you've got 3 plus 6. So this is increasing. All right. Now let's do the concavity. So it can only change at minus 1. Okay only here. So what is y double prime of minus 2? That would be minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 minus 6. So concave down. What is y double prime of 0? 0 plus 1 is 1, so positive 6. So concave up. Okay, now next, let's analyze. Is there any of it for any of these critical points here, first or second? Does that course what what is those what are those points? Is that a local max or min? Is that an inflection point or or is it neither? Well, all right. Starting with the local max or min, we can use the first derivative test to check, and the only requirement is the function needs to be continuous everywhere. And so this is a polynomial. It's continuous everywhere, so or at least continuous at the critical points. And so, all right. So now the 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 test is you just see is the function does the function does the first derivative switch signs over a critical point? So here we go from increasing to decreasing. So this x is equal to minus two is a local max. From over zero we go from decreasing to increasing. So this is a local min. Okay, and then we could also have potentially used the second derivative test, which would, we would see at, we would check the second derivative at each of these points. So at minus two, the second derivative is negative, so concave down, so that's a local max. At zero, it's positive, so that's a local min. All right, so what we can do is we can come to these points and kind of indicate the, the local max or min behavior. So here, this is a local, this is minus 2, 4, this is a local max, so it'll be, you know, kind of like that. This is a local min, so it'll be something like that. Okay, now what about the inflection points? The, the inflection point can only you can have a, a you can have a potential local max or min at a discontinuity, but you can't have an inflection point at a discontinuity. But that's not a problem here. The function is continuous, so now all we got to do is check: does the concavity or does the second derivative switch signs across the inflection point or across the critical the second critical point? It does. So this is an inflection point. So this is an inflection point. All right. Now we've got all the information. We've got all the information we need. Now let's plot the, let's sketch the graph. So, okay. From negative two to negative infinity, we should have, we should be increasing the entire way. And that's, that's right. That makes sense because the curve is going to be, you know, like that. Okay. Now let's see. We're also from negative one to negative infinity, we're concave down. And that makes sense as well. We're going to be all in this region. We're going to be, until we get to this point, we're going to be concave down, you see, until we get to x is equal to negative one, not negative two. We switch from, we should switch from po a positive function to a negative, in, to a negative, fu a decreasing function at negative two, yes. But we don't switch concavity until we get to the inflection point. Okay? So we're going to be, concave down in this entire region. 
And then as x, the endpoint, as x goes to negative infinity, the function goes to negative infinity. Okay. Now here we're decreasing, and but we we don't but we stay con we have to stay concave down though. I mean it's kind of. Let me try. Okay. That might look better. Okay, now here we switch to concave up. And then, okay, so we're in this interval, we're still concave. Well, we're concave up for the rest of the curve. You see? From minus 1 to infinity. But then we, we should still be decreasing from minus 2 to 0. Yes, and then from 0 to infinity, we're increasing. See? And then as x approaches infinity, the function goes to infinity. So this endpoint behavior is satisfied. We've got a local max here, a local min here. There's the inflection point. You see we switch. You see how the concavity was switched? We went from like this to like this. And you see how in this region the concavity stays concave down. I'm always kind of drawing an upside down U. I'm never doing anything like this. All right, so there you go. We just sketched the curve, and we've satisfied all of the re requirements of the analysis. There's no symmetry. The, in the endpoints, in requirements are met. The, in the intervals of concavity, increasing, decreasing. The, infl the inflection points, ma local maxes and mins are all met. And But just so good, right? But just to point out, though, you could take this further and get a more accurate curve, or just from a, you could take it further from an analysis standpoint. You could have analyzed, you could say, what's the limit as x approaches this point from the left and the right of the first derivative, of the second derivative, and get the slopes right coming in here. Get the slopes, get the slopes exactly right coming into the, into the local max or min. But I mean, I, I, I guess you wouldn't do that because that would be overkill, but from a, potentially from an, an analysis standpoint, you might do that, right? Coming in, like if you're analyzing a physics curve, a physics equation or a or an engineering equation or something, and you want to, okay, you, you might be interested to know, or an economics equation, what's the, what's the slope coming into this local max or min? What does that mean? What does that, is, does it have any actual meaning in terms of the interpretation of the function? So just want to point that out as well.